Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, viewers. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Fountain um, devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today being Wednesday, the 15th of November, 2023. You are welcome. Uh, our topic this morning is faith and works. And our text will be in Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 7. Then we'll get to chapter 4, 1 to 13. Let us pray before we read the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again this morning. What a beautiful day. What a glorious day you have given to us. What an excitement to be alive this morning. Thank you for your grace and mercy that has brought us into this day. You have not brought us into this day without a definite purpose. We now ask, O oh God, as we begin this morning, that you will send your word. The scripture says, the word I speak, they are life and they are spirit. Lord, we ask that the entrance of your word, we give light and understand to the simple. Let the brokenhearted be healed by your word. Let the sick, let the oppressed be set free by your word this morning. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen our faith, strengthen our hearts by your word this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3, from verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. For who, for who, haven't heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Therefore, chapter 4, from verse 1, Since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear less any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works we have finished from the foundation of the world, for he who, sp who has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached, did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, as has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest 
for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself ceased from his works as God did from his, from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our topic today remains faith and works. I wouldn't speak on this topic much without making reference to what Apostle James wrote in his epistle in chapter 3. James writing in chapter 3 made huge impute to this very subject. If we check uh, in verse, in that chapter 3, looking at verse, okay, chapter 2 of James, looking at, um, let's say, verse 14, he said, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to him, Depart in peace and be worn and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Jump to verse 26, he says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Now you can take time to read the other previous verses in that same chapter too. But if you look at the challenge God seemed to express with his, with his people, the children of Israel, you will notice is this, this matter of faith not backed up with adequate works. There can be faith where there is no corresponding works. The proof of a man's faith is in what he does. Let's take for instance, for you to pay tithes, for instance, you believe that God's promise for tithing is true. Our actions are proofs of what we believe. We, we, we act based on what we believe. So there can be possibly faith when there is no a corresponding activity to show that one has faith. Now, it's, 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 it's normal for God to be displeased with them. Because if you check through scriptures and this particular passage in Hebrews, you will notice that God keeps making reference to, I brought you out of Egypt. I don't know how the Israelites were too quick to forget what, the, what it took to bring them out. God brought them out by a, a mighty hand. God shook, shook Pharaoh so strongly until he released them. In fact, they were so relaxed in their bondage that they felt that there's no way out. When Moses came to, 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 to rescue them, they almost, they almost told Moses, please leave us the way we are. Don't cause, don't cause more trouble for us. But Moses was coming by the mandate of God. And God said to Moses, don't worry. I will show, I will bring you out and the people out with his, an, with his an outstretched strong arm. And all that Pharaoh did, God still prevailed and brought them out. Having asked them for vessels and all that and favor that God granted them and they left. They remembered how they followed them out of Egypt and they were facing the Red Sea. But of course, they had to go through this part of wilderness for about 40, they have taken them 40 days, took them 40 years because of unbelief. The God who saved you from that strong man's hand, is he not able to save you in the matter of food? Is he not able to save you in the matter of your shelter? 
A people that have been delivered from Egypt came and began to murmur. No food, no water. They kept complaining. They lost focus that the one who is leading them has saved them from Egypt. You see, I have found out that God's dealings with men is that his previous deliverance is a matching, is, is a stepping stone for your future deliverances. What God did with you or did for you in the past should be an anchor to trust him for future. So these people claim to have faith, but their actions deny the faith. So God was angry with them. What was the anger? They, they had no faith that was backed by what? If they believe God, they would simply say, the God who brought us from Egypt will not bring us this place to kill us. We can trust him. Having brought us out, he will take us in. And did God do it? He did it. Even though he wiped out that generation, yet his commitment for them to get to Canaan was still fulfilled. The point is that God is displeased when we express by our action our lack of faith in him. And there are several ways we show that. There are several ways we show that. First, by the time we murmur. Yes, the country, the economy is bad, things are bad. And we talk like unbelievers. We talk like people who don't have hope. We speak like people who are, who are on the same platform with everybody. No. We have a God who has not just saved us from sin, he is carrying us through. We are confident. We don't know how we'll survive. We don't know how we'll do it. But day after day, God has always shown himself faithful. So when others are murmuring, complaining, we should be rejoicing and giving thanks to God. And while we're doing that, we are sure that he who has promised us is faithful. You can't say you have faith, but your word is so negative. You know, sometimes it's strange that people finish praying in church and just a few minutes after service, the way they talk is clear that what they said in church is, is they don't believe it. They just said some religious language and all that. The statement they are making, even in the church compound, is a proof that what they just finished saying to God, they don't believe it. And God said, there is another rest. And that's what is very important. You see, when faith is backed up by proper work, this work is not, you are trying to say, it's my work that will save me or will deliver me. No, this work is predicated on the fact that you trust what God has said. You are working from a premise. You are working from the premise that God has made a commitment. So you are working that his commitment cannot fail. You are banking on his promise. You are banking on his word. And by that word, you are working. And in, you see, in this life, there are situations and uh, challenges that will come to us that want to confront what we believe, want to challenge what we believe. But you see, in the midst of all that, we have to act in such a way that proves that even though the circumstance may not be fully palatable, but I know that God has made a promise. I'm going to act in that manner. I'm going to walk in that manner. I'm going to live in that manner, showing my faith in God. God is ever faithful. So faith and works are two inseparable twins. That is why James said, show me your faith and I will show you my work. How will he show you the works? He show, he show you his faith by the actions he's taking. Take for instance, Noah. Noah was a man of faith. I hope you know that before the time of Noah, there was not such similar thing that would suggest to him that I better follow. No. I think that was the first experience Noah will have. But he counted God faithful. And what was, what was the sign that he believed that God would destroy the world? What was the sign? The sign was that he went on to build the ark. Whatever you believe, it can be inside your heart. The proof of your faith is in what you are doing. If you believe that God blesses hard work, you will work hard. Yes. When I'm hearing things like, you know, I have faith and you are lazy and you are sleeping around, you don't know faith. When you know biblical faith, it will force you to work, knowing that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. That is faith. 
My faith is seen by my actions. Your faith is seen by your actions. It is what you do that say what you believe. Not just about what you are saying. So these two must agree to bring about result. Now, you need to know that the writer of Hebrew was talking about another rest. There yet remained another rest. You know, as I watched my master Jesus when he lived on earth, I saw a state of rest that one is praying to experience and walk in. He was never, he was never under pressure. Ah, we need to pay task. Why they were there? He said, no, just, bring, just, go to the, just go to the sea. Pick the fish, anything you see there, just bring it and pay them. Although we are not supposed to pay ta tax, but just so that there will not be trouble. He was not under pressure. Look at the multitude to feed. He, he will not be shaken. Ah, the disciples were agitated. No, no bread. Send them away. We don't have to. He said, just relax. What do we have? Just some few loaves and, and, loaves of, and fishes. He was never, he had the rest. He just gave thanks. He said, share it. What kind of rest is that? People today are suffering from all kinds of sickness because there's no rest. They say they have faith in God, but their actions are showing that their faith is not in God. They, 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 they pray, but they worry more than those who don't pray. There's nothing as important in this time we are in like God bringing you to that rest. Which is I'm not talking about. Resting in the confidence that God, who has made a promise, cannot, cannot fail. That is it. Faith in the fact that what God has promised, not to leave us, not to forsake us, that the children will not beg bread, it, if it is true, and you believe that word, it will bring rest to you. I remember one, one account, Jesus was in the sea, and there was a great storm. So much, so much that the disciples were already, already, you know, shouting. If you check that scripture, the Bible says, they wake him out of pressure. Say, don't you care that we perish? He woke out of sleep. Rebuke the wind and say, where is your faith? Why, why, why are you of little faith? Where is your faith? So, I'm seeing that if they knew who they carried, the creature can swallow its creator. If they are confident that whom they carry in that journey is God, ah, they wouldn't have been disturbed. Can I ask you a question? Do you think that if they didn't call on Jesus, that that storm will have swallowed him? It's not possible. It's not possible. So, you see, sometimes storms of life come around us. They threaten to swallow us. They threaten to shake our faith. But the proof of our faith is that we stay steady to God. Our faith not shaking, believing that God will come through for us. They mocked Noah, for instance. So what are you doing? People are busy with their business, busy with their things. But Noah kept building. They kept building, kept building, kept building, until God decided, today is it. I'm destroying the whole world. And the rain began. What others were laughing about? He took serious. That is why you cannot take the word of God serious. You can, men can say things and you just trivialize it. But when it's God, treat it with seriousness. Act on the word of God. Believe the word of God. If God says, don't worry. In Matthew chapter 6, for instance, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Say, and all these things will be added to you. How do you believe that scripture? How do, you, how do you make of that scripture? What do you make of that scripture? Do you believe that in seeking the counsel of God, seeking the kingdom of God, God is able to make all other grace abound towards you? Do you believe that? If you believe it, why are you agitated? Why are you restless? Why are you jumping from place to place? What's the matter? Friends, there is a rest that comes when there is sincere faith. If our faith in Christ and God is sure, He brings us to rest. Why? It will, it will take away from us agitation. I know 
that my Redeemer lives. I am confident that he who has made a promise is ever faithful to fulfill it. That's an action. You are not under, under pressure of, you know, trying to find a way out, trying to do the, no, no. You are confident that if it is God who has promised, I trust him. I have faith in him. And that, that faith is what is making me either to walk, either to have rest, either whatever it is. But faith, when it's true, when it's biblical faith, it will go with works. If you believe that God will judge sinners, you can't claim that you are born again and you are playing around sin. No, you can't. You can't. You can't continue in sin with the mindset that grace will abound. No. That was why John will argue in 1 John when he says, whoever continues in sin, whoever is born of God does not continue in sin. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. And whoever practices unrighteousness is unrighteous. It is what you do that communicates what you believe. Your faith is shown in your actions. The way you carry, you bear about your life is a, is a proof that your faith is either in God or not. Unfortunately, most who claim to have faith in God have faith in things and not in God. Some have faith in their bank account. Some have faith in their connection. Some have faith in something but not in Jesus. If we have faith in Jesus, it will affect how we live. Job will say things like this, even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There's reason to cause God and die and forget about this God matter. But he said, no. Can I receive good from God and not receive bad from him? That was faith in action. So this morning, as I call us to pray, do you really have faith in God? Your actions, are they portraying genuine faith in God? Are you murmuring? Is there unbelief? The way you are living, is it a proof that you trust God? Jesus made a sword. He said, they won't enter into my rest. Listen to me. Sometimes we make sin of fornication, stealing, you know, all kinds of things, you know, cheating and all that. So strong. But listen to me. To not believe God is a serious offense to God. To act as if God is not in the equation is an offense to God. It's a serious sin to God. When we talk as if we don't have God, when we behave as if we don't have God, it's a slap on the face of God. And God must be able to restore us back to the place where concrete faith is backed up by a concrete work. If I believe God's word, if I believe God, I will act accordingly. Even when there seem to be no be commensurate results, but I believe that what God said is true, I act by his word. Standing on the word of God. Standing on the promise of God. So this morning, as we... Uh, tie up, our reading brings two things to light about our anchor in Christianity, faith and works, as well as the consequences of unbelief. God can give us rest in our family, career, or any other part of life. The blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow. Yet, with some people who have made it in life, but still lack some things like health, children, etc. The word of God is can be depended upon but we need to act on what we hear from him in order to see it work it is not the hearers alone who are blessed but the hearers because faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God but the doers the proof that you have had well is that you did the parable of the sower Portray the same thing. The seed fell on three grounds that were not fruitful. They heard it with excitement. Some couldn't heard it or couldn't understand it. Some heard it and it was choked. Those who profited from it were those who engaged it. 
God's word to us is not to excite us. God's word to us is to be engaged. And until it is engaged, it can bring forth fruit. So faith and works must work together. Show me your faith without works. And I will show you my own faith by my works. Your faith is shown by your works. The way you live, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, the way you do things is a proof of your faith, either in God or not. Bow your heads this morning as we pray. God's word is able to quicken us again this morning. So dear Father, this morning we thank you for your word to us again. We plead with you that you will cause us to rise in faith, into obedience. In this turbulent time, turbulent economic challenge, difficulties, insecurity and all that, help our faith to be steadied in you. Bring us into this rest. This rest that, that, that even in the midst of turbulence, one is rested. Just like our master Jesus. Bring us into that rest as we commit our faith afresh to you. As we live in a manner that shows that we are confident and we put our faith in you. Please, Lord, strengthen our faith this morning. Help us to live in such a manner to prove that we are confident that you are able. Is there any faith that is shaky? Let it be restored this morning. Set us on the path of victory once again. And we will walk in that path that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. May God bless each one of us, bless my viewers, and bless your day today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.